Okay. Well, obviously coming off a disappointing loss for us and uh, uh, looking uh, forward to getting back to work and playing the type of football we played in the first six weeks. So uh, hasn't shown up the past couple weeks. And um, certainly our guys are eager to get back to that. Uh, obviously we're committed to working hard and getting there and that's what our focus has been on. So that being said, we'll take questions. Yeah, Coach, about the offensive line, uh, Stanford, Cal, Washington, success. The only difference I see is Panay Sewell not playing. Uh, Washington State, Arizona, was it their scheme or are they quicker? Or what, what do you attribute to, and I wouldn't think Panay Sewell would be that much of a difference since you have experienced guys replacing him. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a big factor. Obviously, he's a good football player, but uh, it's not an excuse for – not uh, producing or performing up to our standard. I think we know that. Um, at the same time, I think you know me well enough where I'm never going to come up here point a finger at a player or whatnot. We take it as coaches and players together. So we have to do a better job teaching and scheming and applying the fundamentals that we believe in uh, to get a better result, and uh, which will in turn turn into a better performance as well. Uh, yeah, have people stacked the box a little bit? Uh, have they moved on us a bunch? They have. They have. That's part of it. But we've also had that in the first six weeks as well and blocked it pretty well. So we have to uh, continue to work and continue to make the adjustments, um, maybe play a few more guys as well. Um, but overall, it's you got to stick with your guys and believe in the fact that we could get back to the level that we were playing at just 14 days ago. I think that's important. No, it was not. I don't think so. I think you, when a team does a good job against you, um, you know, you got to give them credit where credit is due. I also believe that due to the nature of the flow of the game, it turned into more of a passing game due to the score. So it took away from us being and sticking with the run. So it ended up being a different type of ball game than we're used to. Mary, you mentioned a lot about first and second downs as well, particularly in the first half. Mm -hmm. First seven weeks, you were averaging, I believe, right around nine first down throws. You had seven in the first half this past week. Was there something they were doing schematically? Was that the plan all along? Were they stacking the box too much? Because when we get back to getting away from identity of being run first on first mm -hmm. down, that seems to be an indicator that something has changed here. They did stack the box. They had the safety sitting in there. They played some of the cover one stuff where we felt we had some good matchups. And we've been a pretty balanced offense, slightly more run than pass overall. But over the past couple of weeks, we have, we've gone away from what we have been. Uh, obviously, that's no secret. We haven't performed to the level that we're used to or gotten used to in the first six weeks. So, um, And a good part of it was trying to take advantage of what we felt we saw in the defense. So hopefully that answers your question. That's what we're trying to do. Mario, obviously uh, UCLA's coach is Chip Kelly. He used to be here. I was just wondering, like, do you remember like his Oregon days? And can you kind of describe the impact his offense here had on college football and, and what he's seen from his first UCLA team? You know, in terms of um, being that I was on the East Coast, hard to, you know, really fix in and kind of know exactly what went on or what not. Uh, obviously did a great job in his career uh, in terms of that's about all I can say in terms of his time here. Uh, in terms of UCLA, they're, they're doing a real good job, you know, every single week, just getting better and better. They've got a lot of talent on that team and they've got a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. And, um, you know, they've, they've shown it in spurts. So uh, a lot of respect for that team. We know it's a team that we have to be completely prepared uh, for to have success against them on Saturday. And I'm looking forward to them coming over here to Austin. Month of September, Justin Herbert was seventh in the country in quarterback rating, tops in the Pac-12. Uh, month of October, it was statistically his worst month of his career. He's 99th in quarterback rating. What's changed, I guess? I'm not trying to blame him for the losses, but what's mm -hmm. what's changed with his ability to throw the ball and you guys passing attack? Yeah, we got to coach it better. We got to play better. You know, it's a combination of things. I mean, it's I think it's something that we've said, and, and I know we're re revisiting today. Uh, I respect it, but... You know, the, the pass is tied into the run. You've got to run the football to be able to have balance and create opportunities for the passing game. Um, so it is not, uh, this doesn't fall on the shoulders of solely Justin Herbert or the wide receivers. Uh, all of us have a share in this. You know, the offensive line, the running backs, uh, the whole offense, and first and foremost, uh, the coaches. we got to do a better job. But I think, I hate to give you, you know, plain answers like that, but I think every single time, 
it's a question about something that's not going like we want it to, I'm always going to say that because that's what it comes down to. I do want to point out that for the first six weeks, we were first in almost every offensive statistic in every category. So we've been there. We know how to do it. And we've got to regain the confidence and regain the composure and poise to play at that level because we know what it looks like. We've done it. And we've got to scratch and claw and fight to get back to that level. And it starts by having great relationships with your players, you know, establishing more and more trust. Um, the workload is not, it's not ever a question. The work has been done. We work hard. We get after it. Um, but we've got to restore the execution, the perfection that goes with having a, a, a very uh, explosive and successful offense. Mario, it's, it's looked like outside of Dylan Mitchell that your receivers have had trouble getting separation. Would you agree with that? And is that something you can address with scheme or is it just execution? Oh, you know, we're, we've got a young receiver core. Um, I think sometimes teams have done a good job of making it difficult, playing a lot of man coverage. Um, they've mixed up some of the looks. Um, some of them are getting better. They're working at it. And some of them have had some really good success and some are still working at it. But uh, I wouldn't point to them as having poor play or whatnot. I think that what we know is the Pac-12 conference has some really good football players. And you've got to be able to both throw the ball and run the ball to be successful. And in losing that balance, it's it, the, the effect kind of exponentially, you know, gets bigger. And so um, I think it still starts with running the football better to be able to create looser coverages so that our receivers can, can get open more cleanly. You guys had so much success early on this season, five out of six wins to start. I'm curious, what's the psyche of your guys been like after consecutive tough weeks? Yeah, well, you know, that's the first thing we wanted to get to the bottom of yesterday. And I think we did. I think we all know. Um, and the, the highlight was, look, man, we're 14 days removed from playing some of our best football. And uh, we've worked just as hard. You know, our regimen and our processes have remained intact. The attention to detail has to increase, has to get better. That's something that I feel, you know, anytime you, you take a dip in performance, attention to detail has to be the first thing you address and take a look at, assess, and to see how it could be done better. And, uh, and take accountability and responsibility, everyone in the organization. Zero pointing fingers, just get at it, but get at it responsibly and, and, and intelligently. It's not just blind work. It's not just go grind. Certain things have to improve, and uh, those things have been assessed. Uh, they have been addressed and practice is structured to be able to improve at those particular uh, areas. So, and that's the route that we're going to go. That's the only way we know. And I think our, you know, our guys understand also is, look, we, we've got eight seniors on this team. We've got a young football team. And when you hit, you know, adversity like this, especially when a good brunt of it is, is self-induced, you've got to buckle down and you've got to really set your focus on the things that we must get better at. There's no magic uh, solution or potion or whatnot. It, it requires really, really getting ingrained into what you have to do and get better. Mary, I can appreciate the game within a game, the math and the blocking and the stack in the box and all those things, but mm -hmm. it, it's not always that simple. I mean, surely, I mean, obviously you know that. I mean. Mm -hmm. you're, you're able to run at times when you're outnumbered. Any team is at times. Sometimes they're able to pass when they're outnumbered in coverage. Why against two teams who well, they've beaten you? I know you have to be respectful about it, but a team mm -hmm. who struggled mightily against the run before mm -hmm. this last weekend, why was it that the run game got off either by play selection or by performance against this team? Yeah, there's really no excuse. You know, I, I can say the things that uh, – where the brunt of it falls on, the responsibility, and I'll keep saying it, it falls on us as coaches and players. You know, you have to win your one-on-one -on -one matchups when a box is stacked. Um, regardless, we've run the, the ball against stacked boxes before, and you have to, just like you have to throw the ball against coverage sometimes. So, um, And, again, that execution has to deal with the way you prepare, um, the way you execute and whatnot, and it just it was not good enough. Um if you want individual, like how so-and-so is matching up against so-and-so, you know, some guys had success and some guys didn't. Sometimes you get beat at the point of attack and sometimes you get beat on the backside, which is just as important as the front side. But we've implemented zone schemes, gap schemes, inside zone, outside zone, tight end side, 
runs, open side runs, split and runs, all the stuff and more. Um, and we've, we got out of sync. We got out of sync. I believe that, uh, especially the way we established ourselves early in the season, that we can and will get that back. Um, but it, it starts and ends with fundamentals up front, great pad level, feet in the ground, hands inside. And, uh, and we will work to reestablish that. Uh, as Ryan mentioned, uh, this is uh, Chip Kelly coming back to Odson. I'm just curious in your two seasons here, you know, just from walking around or talking to donors, former Ducks, what have you learned about, you know, the legacy that he left behind taking this program to heights they had never been before? I don't know. It's a, we're so ingrained in working out what we're doing in the program and, and reestablishing it that, um, I mean, yeah, I think you, you have to recognize, you know, great things that were done by him and all former coaches here. How much of a dive do I take into that? Uh, I really don't have much time to do that, but uh, I, I don't think you ever uh, not recognize and be honest, right, with yourself and as it relates to any part of the history of any program. So I think it's always, you have to give it its due respect, and we do. Um, I know you talked a little bit about UCLA, how they're good on both sides of the ball. Can you a little more in detail, tell me what you think the biggest threats will be this weekend mm -hmm. um, as far as like schemes and different things like that. No, they, they have some good players, you know, obviously um, a little bit similar in terms of quarterback preparation. They've played two different guys and um, and both have been pretty effective, you know, in moving the team. And I know one was a starter to start off and there was an injury or whatnot. And then uh, the young uh, quarterback came in and, and did a heck of a job, really athletic. But, you know, UCLA always has really good players. They're in a obvious a hotbed of talent and at the skill positions and at the tight end position at running back. The running back is big. He's explosive. He's a downhill guy, a tight end. They're long and athletic A wide receiver. They have all the different pieces you want for your wide receiver core. Long, athletic, can stretch the field, quick, explosive with a lot of wiggle. Uh, and they have an offensive line that is really playing well, playing at a high level. So. Uh, they're executing really well. You know, you could see that they've come a lot the last couple of um, the last three games that they're really building some really good momentum. And defensively, you know, it all starts up front. They, you know, their nose tackles in the 380 pound range, real big guy. They tilt him. They try to take your center and knock him back. They will really stack the box, play the bare front, cover both guards at center, uh, create some uh, some edge pressure. They try to get exotic on third down, try to put pressure on your quarterback. And they'll do a, a lot of what we've seen the past couple of weeks. They'll get up there and mug your wide receivers and try to disrupt the, the timing of your passing game. So overall, again, an, another to me, it's just another example of a Pac-12 team. Everybody in the Pac-12 is, uh, is good enough to beat anybody on any Saturday. And so we have to prepare to our best. We've seen this season at receiver basically four guys of Mitchell, Schooler, Johnny, and Jalen. What's separating them from the rest of the pack of – Dimitri Birch and Daywood and some of the freshmen, what are those guys needing to improve on to be able to help you with receiving? The guys that are behind and need to improve in their consistency. Um, I would always say that fundamentals, consistency, uh, understanding the scheme inside and out, uh, making the plays in practice. You know, it's easy. Uh, you know, it's not hard to put together a depth chart because of what you see in practice. We always tell our guys it's, uh, you know, you, you got to show it so that we can play you. It's not the other way around, right? It's not, let's play and see what you can do. It's not a tryout come game day. And so during practice, during camp, um, all the all the things that we do to try to enhance development, to try to get guys ready to play, they tell you, you know, and, uh, and you got to listen to them. And when I say listen to them, listen to the film, as crazy as that sounds, look at it. It's trying to tell you something, whether a guy's ready or not. Um, and we're, again, if a guy's ready to contribute, a bunch he's he's going to be on the field he's going to be on the field so and again you, even though a guy is not ready you don't stop developing him you still got to keep going forward and whatnot all right jerry yeah coach i don't want to belabor this or maybe i misunderstood you, you kind of said something about a young team but as i look at the offense i mean the whole offensive line's been three years the receivers have all beat arizona last year this basically this whole team beat arizona last year mm -hmm. with the same personnel so I think that's what's disappointing to people. I'm sure you feel that way too, right? I mean, you had success last year. They're a young team, very young team on the offensive line. So could you just kind of explain what you meant by that? Yeah, well, I never use youth as an excuse for anything. Let's make that clear, right? 
okay, maybe I should have said it differently that we don't have many seniors on our team. So maybe not a senior laden team would have been a better choice of words, but uh, I've never made an excuse to you or anybody about a loss. And a loss is disappointing uh, as it is. So uh, we did not start the game well and we did not respond well when we got hit in the mouth. I think that's, uh, that's obvious. And that's an aspect of our team that I have to do a better job coaching to get a better response because in this conference and any conference play, you're going to encounter that. You're going to encounter a really, really stiff and hard shot from your opponent, especially when you're on the road. And when you do that and when you get that, you have to counter the momentum, okay? And, um, and we have to do that. We have to train that. That's not a natural reaction. That's not something that happens just because we practice. We have to train that. It has to be a huge, a bigger point of emphasis, and it has been to get the right response. Wondering how you guys made it from a health perspective. I know you gave some preliminary stuff on Saturday, but I wonder if there's any more updates, especially with guys like Dylan Mitchell and Dallas Ormack. Yeah, well, we have a couple guys that uh, actually both Dylan Mitchell and Justin Herbert, they're both in uh, concussion protocol. And it's something that uh, I don't have, you know, we any time that the doctors choose to put someone in concussion protocol is uh, we just leave it in the hands of them and they let us know exactly what goes on to determine exactly if and how extensive that injury should be. Uh, Kano Dillon, we expect him um, hopefully to be back by Wednesday practice. He is not full speed yet. Uh, Austin Falu, we expect him back this week, hopefully by tomorrow, if not the latest Wednesday. Uh, Lana is back. Uh, Dallas Warmack, um, he did go down with, um, with uh, a little bit of a shoulder tweak, but he seems to be okay. All, uh, all tests that were run on him were clean, and um, I think that sums it up right there. Mario, with Justin, was that something that happened on a, a particular hit in the game? Was it at the end of the game? Was it during the game? Did you determine that? Yeah, you know, that's always hard to tell. You never know. Um, you know, you would... It might have been at the end. It looks like that might have been the point, but without you know not being a doctor, I can never comment on exactly when. But anytime someone seems to have you know taken on a hit, they're always going to be. We're always going to take you know the highest level standard in terms of assessing guys to make sure that safety is at the forefront, and the priority. Um, but in terms of when, hard to say. With Justin's injury or percussion protocol, how much mm -hmm. attention are you giving to Burmeister and Shuck in practice of first team reps? Is that something that their numbers could go up this week in preparation for worst case scenario? It could. It could. You know, we wait and see, which I guess we'll, we'll inform you of anything else we receive from that standpoint. I think it's uh, been well established. Paul's been upfront and honest with you guys about all that stuff. But, um, you know, should the case be where it's something where they are have to play right away? Absolutely. Those guys will be taking a bunch of reps. Um, and that goes for any position as well. You know, it, uh, it certainly was a case when Panay went down, when uh, when Cam McCormick went down, you know, Austin going down. That was one that, you know, Andrew, his younger brother, got a lot of playing time and actually played really well. So that's always something that we have as part of a plan when someone gets injured. First, Mary, because this is going to be hindsight 2020, but fans were already asking why Justin was in the game late on that last drive because of the score and everything else. And now with this news, they're going to revisit it. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit of the strategy and decision making there, keeping him in the game at that point mm -hmm. because of this? I understand it's hindsight 2020. Mm -hmm. And my other question would be about UCLA's safety. He seems to be a very prolific player for his safety tackle-wise and stuff. Can you comment on his play this season? Sure. Uh, in terms of us and playing towards the end of the game, we were not having much offensive success, and we wanted to end the game on some type of positive note offensively. We want to be able to move the ball and get out of there having at least some sort of confidence in moving and potentially scoring. In terms of the safety, um, he's a good football player, and he showed up a lot last year against us, made a lot of plays, gets downhill in the run game, makes a lot of tackles, and is excellent in pass coverage. So he's a complete football player. That certainly um, is someone to be a someone that you must account for on every single play. 